inform me that uh, the cabinet has endorsed the document we jointly put together, okay. and that uh, we look forward to holding a meeting with them. to us and uh, was appreciative of the cabinet endorsement okay. and pledged the one UN system fully in support uh, to this document. So we met now as government mm. to begin to put together our own plan that we share with our partners in the UN. Mm. So that's what the meeting was about on Thursday. Okay. Now, so after the document I made reference to, that was your first meeting after the endorsement of the document. Absolutely. Okay, that's the reason, that was the reason why I said it. that was the first meeting. Now, uh, we just wanted to give us an idea, Mr. Minister. What is key in that uh, document that is good for uh, the disadvantaged young people, that, that is going to elevate their lives, that are going to change their lives? So what is, you know, really contained in that document? Well, the entire document is good for them because mm. the entire document is a good for them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. So one, uh, the document put together will transform the Youth Agriculture Training Center in Benzinville okay. that is under the control of the Ministry of Youth and Sports mm -hmm. into a rehabilitation center. Okay. They're going to transform it? Yeah. Okay. We're going to renovate it and we're going to be now, instead of being just an agriculture mm -hmm. uh, institute, it will be a rehabilitation center for our agric youth. Okay. And that will have an additional uh, 12 trades, so beginning 13 trades, including agriculture, will be there. Now, mm -hmm. so also there are three phases to this whole document mm -hmm. when it comes to our region, to the, to the region. The first phase is the selection, orientation, and rehabilitation phase. Okay. And that is key to this program. Mm -hmm. And that is why, that's one of the decisions we made on Thursday both the ministries of health and gender and social children and social protection mm -hmm. will begin to put together an operational document for phase one okay. because this phase is very key we want to uh, build upon a program we, we had we, we carry out a pilot project mm -hmm. that uh, the government and the UN system uh, ran uh, called SEED the social economic Empowerment Disadvantaged Youth. Mm -hmm. It was a pilot program that targeted 500 of our average youth and were very successful. Okay. We want to build on that model. What did we do? We had drop in centers. I believe there were three, but we want to increase that number of drop in centers. Okay. And what we also agree, and at the final minister had discussed is that we have had so many studies when it comes to the average youth, mm -hmm. and we cannot. And all the study will tell you there will just be estimation of how many at-risk youth we have in Liberia. We conducted a study paid for by the UN FDA in January 2021 mm -hmm. by Dr. Tikon Williams. And there were over 47,000 of the at-risk youth in all 15 counties that were reached. But according to that document, it estimated that there are 100,000 of them in Liberia. Mm -hmm. But a document also said there are over 440,000. 40, and the reason we can't put a figure on that is because okay. they move about. They are not stationary, most of them. Okay. You know, some of them are petty, they commit little crime, mm -hmm. and they move to another ghetto. Okay. So what we want to do now part of the program is, mm -hmm. that's why the, the phase one is very, very important. The orientation, the selection, the orientation phase, especially, especially the selection, mm -hmm. it's going to be rigorous. We're going to identify them, make sure that each of them that will be selected and go through the various processes will have a biometric ID card. Okay. We have a database that so as we process you, you have identified by a biometric. Okay. So like that will happen, we'll be able to capture everybody and now we we go first I want to know your health condition. What are you going through? What are your interests? What mm -hmm. kind of training you want to learn? What are your family connections? Who are your family? Because part of this program Mm -hmm. There has to be family reintegration. Okay. And we have to know who the family but most of the families have abandoned these folks and that is why some of them are most of them in the street. So to make this program successful, mm -hmm. that family reintegration is very, very important. 
So they 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 they, they that is after in. they have enrolled on in the program. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, because because family reintegration mm. is in the second phase. Okay. Where had a vocational training capacity building, their family reintegration. And phase three has to do with uh, uh, job placement and connection to the job market. Okay. And that's why the business community, all of them will be part of this process mm -hmm. because we have to make sure that once we rehabilitate the children, mm -hmm. we have to provide a vocational training. We have to make sure that they can do something. And now, you know it will take time to renovate the new agricultural training center. Mm -hmm. But we agreed we're not going to wait for that renovation to finish. Okay. That is why the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Gender, uh, also uh, including the, the, the consultant that uh, helped to, that developed, had to work on this document, mm -hmm. will begin to put that phase one together. Because we believe we should begin to do a selection process. And the Ministry of Youth and Sports will call a meeting as well of all of the vocational schools in Liberia. Okay. Because we want their buy in, mm -hmm. we want their in. We want that part of the process because when it comes to that portion of vocational training, mm -hmm. the youth agricultural training center may not be ready at the, by the time. Okay. But that should not stop the process from going home. So we want to find out for the vocational schools which of them would be willing to work with the government. Some may say, okay, we provide scholarship for 10 persons. Some may say, well, Mr. Minister, we can give them, we can give you a reduced tuition payment. Some may say, we take them free. And you know, mm -hmm. we need to know and line them up. So by the time we get to that phase, mm -hmm. we have somewhere to take them. Now Mr. 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 which one is 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 first? Is it after you've you know, collected them, uh, after you've uh, gathered them, got, you know, gotten that data and all of that, the first thing you do is what is to the, the selection process is the first thing. Okay. To do. Okay. In the selection process we know what are your current health conditions. Okay. Do you have what kind of sicknesses you have? Some may have STDs. Some may have, I, I, I mean, some may be diabetic. Are you going to treat them? Yeah, some okay. have mental health issues. So these are all about the intake process, the selection okay. process. So after the after the selection process, then what next? After that selection process, mm -hmm. those that we need to be treated for whatever sicknesses they have, yes, we make sure they are treated. Okay. Now for that process now. Those that have no kind of a sicknesses, we get to know your injury level, and then we start a detoxification process. Okay. That is how you're going to do detoxification uh, exactly. before sending them to uh, it, vocational training. Of course, okay. it's, it's part of phase one. Okay. So okay. detoxification that will include psychosocial counseling, mm. that will include mental health uh, intervention, that will include sexual reproductive health of matters. You know, all these things are part of the. Mm. And very rigorous. That is why the two ministries were charged with the responsibility to develop the operational document to put this into effect. But we have to start this. We can't wait for our, uh, the YATC to be rehabilitated mm. before because every day the children are coming up here in the number. Sure. We need to begin the intervention. Now, after you've done this selection process, Mr. Minister, I heard you saying that uh, the the agriculture center will, will not be. Uh, uh, Will not be ready to, 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 to take them in. So maybe going to ask um, other vocational you know, institutions to help. Why would the center not be ready then? Because the center requires massive renovation. Okay. So you know to clear up renovation, it takes some wind and rain and season. In mm -hmm. fact, we have to go through the procurement process, okay. identify a company that will do the renovation. All of these things take time. Mm -hmm. Take time. So we can't be waiting. Because the array you said to each other is now waiting. Mm -hmm. We have to begin the begin the, 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 the intervention. And that is why when both ministries put their plan together, look at what the cost factor is, mm -hmm. and there where the Ministry of Finance comes in. Because we have to share the information with our development partner. They will have their input mm -hmm. into it. Because the Minister of Finance will lead also a fundraiser for this program. Of our donors that will involve big companies in Liberia in Europe, so that government already appropriated 750000 in the budget okay. for that, and that will be for renovation. So any other thing we need to do, there will be, will be funding for it. Our UA and development partner will also come in. 
What I'm telling you, mm -hmm. everything we do, whatever we will have a draft that nobody to ministries, mm -hmm. we're going to share it with our U.S. partner. Because, okay, yeah. So they may be our input. We're all on the same page, then we'll move forward. But we believe this process will not wait while we renovate the place. It must, it must start. Okay. Let, now, people often say that uh, Monrovia is not Liberia, which I agree. How are you going to decentralize? Because I know the disadvantage, you know, youth, not just in Monrovia. How are you going to ensure that others who are in other parts of the country are, you know, are also included and benefited also? Well, that's a, that's a good, that's a good uh, question. So firstly, um, this project, we started in Monserrado because we believe the largest population of them are here. Okay. But also, we're going to wait and see what the committee comes up with when mm -hmm. it comes to this election. Because like I said, every selection that we do, we try to figure out how many of them actually exist. And that's why we do the biometric. Okay. The committee may come out and say, look, even though it's for Morovia, but we need to carry on the selection process in every kind of way. We need to do in facing. We will select four counties first, then the next four like that. So let's see where the committee comes up with. But I agree. Mm. Morovia is not Liberia. Okay. And the issue of outbreaks youth is not only in Morovia. Sure. In Montserrat County, all 15 counties have these children. Agricultural ministry play an important role in it. The president has made agriculture a primary uh, objective of his government. The president has talked about government having his own farm. Sure. Maybe some of the folks there, they are not, they don't have any issues. Maybe they are on drugs. Some of them may yet be because family neglect, they have nowhere to stay, nothing to do. Maybe that one we will look at some of them, that group who agriculture ministry on the program mm -hmm. who identify a place and you know we call it a government farm we see how we can send them there to engage the farming providing providers some training there are a whole host of of, of, of options that are there but let's see what the committee comes up with now let's see yeah, your plan mr minister and and trying to uh prepare them before you begin to uh select them because i know uh, they may not understand uh, basically the purpose for which you're trying to select them. You're trying to uh, gather them so that you can take a record and all of that from them, uh, and then they may likely, you know, uh, uh, you know, receive some resistance from them. How are you planning to 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 engage them? How are you planning planning to meet them to say, look, this thing is in your interest because some may not, you know. Uh, made themselves available because they may be uh, afraid that they may be trying to gather them to take them somewhere else. else. Thank you, good question. Mm -hmm. So this whole program is uh, uh, involve everybody. Okay. So the community leadership will be involved. And mind you, mm -hmm. they are raised youth, they are very ghetto to live in. They have a structure. They have a leadership structure. The leadership structure of each ghetto. Mm -hmm will be part of this process. Okay. The police, the DA, by the way, all are meeting the ladder. We all will be part of the process. Mm -hmm. The local government, we will create awareness. We we'll go to this committee, get all of the leaders involved. Okay. So that we create the awareness, let them know we are not coming to you because we want to take you and put you into jail. In fact, I saw a video the other day and a lady was on the video talking that uh, they need help. Don't want the people come and giving them food all the time. They don't need food. They need help. And the DA or the police will start arresting them, putting them in jail. They want change the drug law. All of this, even the drug law. That one of the issue I will come to that mm -hmm. we that we discuss that we let you know. So they will involve everybody. Okay. We will create the awareness before we get started. Mm -hmm. So they understand what is they going to do. We are leadership structure in the Vera ghettos. We play on. Major role. Major role. All the yeah. organizations that deal with at raise youth, we also have a role to play the churches. There are churches that have the, uh, their own at raise youth program. Okay. They will all be part of the process so that we create the awareness and let people know that this process it is not about catching somebody and putting them in jail, but in the beginning of providing help and opportunities for them. Transformation as well for them. Okay, now, after you've gone through the, all of that, Mr. Minister, the government, you know, when I say you, I'm making reference to the, to the government, you know, going through all of, you know, making sure that, you know, uh, preparing the agriculture center, pump, you know, putting all of the, the resources, uh, you know, uh, selecting them and, 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 and you know, taking them to, to train. Uh, 
how do you uh, what's the discussion around uh, making sure that a drug law uh, it's, it's also uh, more strong than why it is and and also, also itself as a complement to your effort so you are aware so about that the lower house already passed uh, Currently before the Senate for concurrence. So part of our discussion on last Thursday mm -hmm. is that the committee uh, and I will work with the Minister of Justice on this. We will reach out to the President pro tem and request a meeting with him. Okay. And we will go there and uh, try to prevail on the President pro tem to see how best they can expeditiously mm -hmm. uh, concur with the lower house. Because this has been a problem. Mm -hmm. If we want to make this intervention, we have to do our best uh, to curtail or reduce to the bare minimum the, the flow of drugs into our country. Okay. If this crown becomes is billable as we speak, but those are bringing the drugs, that those crimes should not be billable. That is not meaningful. But because mm -hmm. there were so many examples, the police and the DEA gave Chilling. Can you mm. imagine mm. you arrest somebody, take them to court, and then the next day the person is out and people laughing at you? So the judicial system as well got to be part of this. Mm. We got to make sure that the laws are strengthened, okay. the laws are strong enough for those who are the perpetrators of the importation of drugs in our country. Because we can't be going after the young folks who are taking in the drugs mm -hmm. and uh, not going after those, not going after those who are bringing or them. those who are bringing the drug mm -hmm. have some preference or treatment under the law mm -hmm. that when they are caught they get bill out of jail. We don't want that. So that is why we'll be meeting with the president pro tem to, to encourage him to see how that the Senate can concur with the law. Zero seven seven six five four zero nine eight seven. Again, 0776-540-987 or better still, 0880-514-096. Again, 0880-514-096. That's the number to call. Our guest here is the Minister of Youth and Sports, Honorable D. Zoga Wilson. He's the head of the task force that has been set up to draft uh, a road map for the rehabilitation of our young people. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. I'm okay. Uh, yes, well, man. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate it for all that drug. And along with the Ministry of Transport. And apart from that rehabilitation, uh, projects that have to do with the company program and the vocational program. Those guys are phenomenal. We have a few years to think about work. But when they come from there, they will know that burning is free, it's not good. So, apart from controlling and other things, just think about work that they will do. So, when they come out, they will be out of the issue. Okay. Man, it's a great thing. There's a local on the line. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, this is Ed Lauren, the boss. Friend called me when I called from the past four years. This year, I've been called the National Congress, the Buddha Relation, the Buddha TV. Okay. First of all, let me just say hi to the minister in the studio. And now, uh, when you listen to me, the minister, I will just pray God for them that they should not give up. Because the figure of this nation is larger than you can. So, by him, sitting this stuff, or just say they are doing for this republic. That when they go going so that they should be for their 12 years on the day of this nation can be rehabilitated. Thank you so much for all. Okay, many thanks. 0776 987 That's the number to call, and you are live. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning. Yes, go right ahead. Oh, this caller is uh, gone. Zero seven seven six five four zero nine eight seven. Let me take this out of on this line. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Tony 
Okay. Uh, you want to thank the minister so much for this. Mm -hmm. um, my first concern has to do with after the youth are being trained, after they are going through all of the processes that should qualify them to be reintegrated, will there be start talking about those youth that at least after the training they can go and start with the little the, the, the program we give them? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, many thanks. Let me take this look on the line quickly. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Honorable Minister, for your expression this morning. You know, this is a government that wants to improve the life of the young people and not the life of teachers. We want to appreciate the minister for the level of work that we are doing in the village. The village is coming on the road. I want to comment our president, our lovely president, who is very well, to continue to put in the young people because the young people, these are the people that will be from our generation. Okay. So thank you to the Honorable Minister for the level of work Oh, okay, this call is, so uh, let's see this call in the line quickly. Good morning. Yes, good morning. This is all from Zulu Whiskey. Okay, let's hear from you. I want to commend the young uh, minister in studio for that initiative. My question to him is this. Was it in the web plan this initiative or because the opposition has said they are not seeing anything in the president's measures. That's one. Another thing is, we talked about the judiciary. Maybe playing some leniency when it comes to adjudicating cases. But what about the security themselves? Now, always need to argue with these guys on a daily basis and need to protect these children and also smoking the drugs. Thank you. Okay, many thanks. I'll take uh, two more calls and then wrap it up quickly. Good morning. Oh, let me take this one. Good morning. Okay. Many thanks. Yes, sir. One quickly. Let me take this call on. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Man, saying, let me take this last one quickly. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. I'm Uti, calling from Grand Cruz County. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. I listen to your knowledge, especially when it comes to, to the youth. If I go welcome you to our one time goalkeeper, on our goal, Zoga Wispo, for the Uta. I would really recommend to you that those gentlemen they should teach them agriculture. Teach them agriculture instead of doing this one, this one, this one. Agriculture will be good for them. One. Two. Look at the drugs. I challenge the government to pass that law. I challenge them. I challenge them. Because what, what, when you pass that law, just little people will do well, just part of the difficulty they are going through. Do it in that same thing. 
Okay. Many things, many things, many things, many things. We are not taking additional calls on that one. Mr. Minister? Yeah, thank you. Let me just respond to Field and Real Quick. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the, the callers asked whether we give them two kids, and the answer is yes. That's why we say we link them to the job market. Mm -hmm. Because when you learn vocational and technical training, you can either be employed or be an entrepreneur. Sure. So, entrepreneurship will be part of the orientation or part of the training we provide for them. So, that is true. The other person asked whether we are doing this because opposition said we are in the State of the Union. Well, quite frankly, the issue of address was in the President's State of the Union address. And we are not doing this because of opposition. The issue of address, you have always said so about it is not political in my view. Sure. It is national. Mm -hmm. And we started the process in 2019 with the former uh, UNDP uh, resident coordinator of parliament as well as UNFPA, uh, Dr. Uh, Bennett uh, in the uh, Yanabangi. Unfortunately, uh, both of them are, are transitioned to other area of assignment. But they started long before, but because, it, because of COVID, it slowed the process. And thankfully, the new folks that came in, new UN resident coordinator, UNDB, and UNFDA, they have all embraced it, and we are on the right track, I don't speak. Okay. Well, Mr. Minister, we really want to thank you for taking time off a busy schedule. Uh, so, uh, before you go, so how soon? Do we see all of the meetings and and documents, you know, being put together, the meetings, uh, holding? How soon do we see uh, a visible uh, uh, action? Well, I don't want to put a time to put a time to it, and then somebody hold me to it tomorrow because okay. you know everything has to do with funding. Okay. And uh, but I'm confident that uh, this project, this project, this program, we kick up this year. Okay. Well, that's the Minister of um, Youth and Sports, his Honorable D. Zuga Wilson. And of course, uh, he's been my guest uh, right here on the, the SMS. Okay.